Welcome everyone. Uh, so let us continue with our concepts of uh, continental drift and uh, seafloor spreading. So we have been talking about the evidence, the evidences which scientists had put forward in support of continental drift and in support of seafloor spreading. And we said one of the uh, most outstanding um, evidences will be studying the paleomagnetism or the magnetic record of the minerals uh, present in the uh, in different types of rocks. So, if uh, we we talked about polarity and reverse polarity in the last class, but let us try to look at it in a um, bit more um, detailed way. Say, for example, uh, while this rock is being cooled, you know. Uh, it has all sorts of magnetic domains which are uh, randomly oriented, okay? All the magnetic domains are, are randomly oriented, right? Uh, uh, all the magnetic moments, my apologies, all the magnetic moments are uh, randomly oriented. And if this particular rock, while being uh, chilled, is under Earth's magnetic field, they will orient themselves, the magnetic moments will orient themselves according to the Earth's magnetic field, right? And because the rock gets cooled and rock gets chilled and the magnetic moments will be frozen. So, and then it attains the polarity of the, of the then magnetic field, okay? Whatever magnetic field is present, okay? So, and hence, as we had explained in the last class, while the mid oceanic while the mid oceanic ridge is erupting and it is making newer crusts uh, and uh, the newest crust is very close to the mid oceanic ridge and as you move away from the ridge the crust gets older we do find these uh, strips of rocks with normal and reverse polarities okay alternate normal and reverse polarities and that provides us a direct evidence that this is this would have not been possible uh, unless this plate was uh, moving or um, or you know new crust being generated at the mid oceanic ridge okay so these are uh, the examples that we had already talked about for example is the is the mid atlantic ridge is one of the most uh, uh, beautiful examples of of such Floor spreading, which is happening right now. Now, what is the mechanism of seafloor spreading and continental drift? Of course, so so the the we call them as lithospheric plates. So this is more or less rigid uh, in um, in in their in their uh, rheology. And if you have to move that one, of course, you need something like a uh, a particular mechanism that facilitates the movement of these plates and hence people have uh, talked about mantle convection cycle but as you as you know uh, if you if you are moving deeper if you are going down uh, in the from the crust to the mantle and then to the core the temperature essentially increases right so you can have an analogy with a with a picker uh, below which I have a I have a, a heat source. So the water here is of course warmer, and the water at the top is colder, and hence there is a disequilibrium created. And to you know maintain equilibrium, what happens? The uh, particles, the water particles, physically move and creates a convection cycle. Okay, so the colder water goes down, and the warmer water goes up. Hence, a convection cycle is established. Similarly, as the bottom as as we go down uh, the temperature of the, the temperature of the earth and, and its material increases hence a convection cycle is also established 
and then this convection cycle essentially drives the plate which is floating immediately above above it okay so it works like uh, if, if you think about it there is there are wheels above which there is a plate because the wheels are rotating there is uh, movement in the plate okay so this is the this is a kind of an explanation of why would we see seafloor spreading and why would we see uh, continental drift and in 1960s this was first time proposed okay this mantle convection cycle so if we try to look at it what whatever just we discussed you know so i have a beautiful mantle convection cycle established because i have a temperature difference uh, so the, the the top part of the mantle is cooler and the uh, bottommost part of the mantle is warmer hence this uh, convection cycle is being uh, generated and uh, due to mantle upwelling uh, hot magma is ascending up okay and these are all sometimes called mantle plumes as well okay uh, but the plume theory is little bit controversial for the timing you can just think about this is mantle up upwelling the hot magma is being generated here okay so there is there is uh, melting of the mantle and the hot molten stuff is moving up and through the mid oceanic ridge this uh, uh, new crust new oceanic crust is being generated okay and because of the convection cycle of course this plate is moving uh, towards right and this plate is moving towards left and hence we see this the development of such beautiful uh, magnetic strips in the uh, in the both sides of the mid oceanic ridge right and we talked about the transform fault yesterday as well if you remember uh, that kind of uh, displaces uh, the the mid oceanic ridge and the associated strips okay. and then of course if if new crust is generated here it must be conserved it gets conserved uh in the in the in the subduction zone so what happens in the subduction zone the oceanic crust essentially as you can see uh again gets destroyed it moves down it subducts under under the continental crust and then of course it again melts and the uh, mass balance is is kind of maintained okay. now of course uh when such plate is subsiding it is always associated with volcanism you can see uh, there are plenty of uh, uh, subduction zone related volcanism uh, which are which are also seen in the in in the plate boundaries as we explained in in the previous class we see the concentration of volcanoes uh, along subduction zone and of course along uh, mid oceanic ridges uh, so we see uh, concentration of volcanoes along the plate boundaries but of course these zones as you can as you can think of are potential zones of instability mechanical instability you can see here this particular plate while it is subsiding this oceanic crust while it is subsiding it also gets broken down so if something gets broken down what happens it also releases energy so you observe earthquakes along the plate boundaries as well you also observe earthquakes along mid oceanic ridges but the earthquakes are of higher magnitude uh, in the in the subduction zone than from the mid oceanic ridges okay so this is more or less the continental drift the drifting of the continent from uh, away from one another and the seafloor spreading are two basic components of plate tectonics so principles of plate tectonics if we just want to put everything together earth's outermost layer is composed of rigid plates moving horizontally okay this moves on the on the surface of the earth right plates interact with each other along their edges okay and they are called plate boundaries of course so we have seen three types of plate boundaries so far we have seen the mid oceanic ridges we have seen the transparent faults where the the slide past each other and we have seen the subduction zone or the trenches they are also called trenches where one crust essentially goes down 
beneath the other class. Okay. So plate boundaries are, have high degree of tectonic activity. We see the development of mountains there. We see the presence of number of earthquakes there, and we see volcanism, rapid volcanism in uh, along the plate boundaries. Okay. So now we can uh, what I just said that we can subdivide uh, plate boundaries into three categories. The first one are the divergent plate boundaries. Divergent plate boundaries are the boundaries where plates move away from each other. Okay, the plates move away from each other, like shown in this beautiful cartoon. And they are nothing but the mid-oceanic ridges. And the divergent plate boundaries is, the, is where new oceanic crust gets developed. Then, uh, of course, convergent plate boundary, where one plate essentially converges with each other. And what we observe that uh, the one 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 particular plate actually moves subducts beneath another crust, right? Another another plate. Okay, here you can see that the oceanic crust is subducting below the continental crust. Okay, okay. And then of course transform plate boundaries. Okay, where uh, the plate plate boundaries move. Uh, actually slide past each other okay and in all of them you do see uh, the presence of uh, you know localization of earthquakes and localization of uh, volcanism right so divergent plate boundaries plates move away from each other new crust is being formed okay uh, some examples of divergent plate boundaries like mid atlantic ridges you can see, uh, as I have shown you in that Google Earth image, it, it is very beautifully evident. And you can observe some transparent faults also associated with these mid-oceanic ridges. Yeah, these all these horizontal lines are the transparent faults which are associated with these, these mid-oceanic ridges. Uh, now you may ask, why do I essentially need to create these, uh, these uh, transparent faults? And we will explain that later on for some. Uh, mechanical stability, you need to create such transform faults. You cannot simply create a continuous switch. We will see that later on. But uh, for the time being, you can see the this is one, this mid Atlantic ridge is one of the most beautiful examples of a uh, divergent plate boundary. Now, other divergent plate boundaries are, for example, Red Sea, yeah, the East African Rift System, okay, uh, Gulf of Aden. And then you see here, now there is a structure which looks like a rift, but as if the rifting started and stopped. Now, this is a very important structure that I want to draw your attention to. And this is what we call a triple junction. We just Okay. I'll try to explain what a triple junction is in a moment. Suppose you have one plate which is made of glass, okay? The plate, the, the dish that you use for your food, okay? Now, if you have the luxury to actually drop this plate hard on the ground, what you will observe that if this uh, plate actually breaks, what you will observe that there will be most likely, if you if you kind of have an ideal uh, elastic collision, what you will observe that the 
plate will break along three fractures. Okay. Plate will break along three fractures. If everything is ideal, so for example, your your uh, plate is completely circular, yeah, and then you don't have any um, any inherent flaws in your in your plate, uh, and the uh, the the whole plate collides with the ground uh, with same speed at the same time. Then, what you will observe that this angle is around. 120 degrees. Okay. So this is the principle of fracture mechanics. Okay. Which says in such situation, such ideal situation, this is how this is how maximum degree of freedom in fracturing is ensured. Okay. is ensured. Now, the same thing happens in case of in case of the earth. So, these plate boundaries, the way they originate is essentially by creating some fractures, right? So, for example, that, that the thing that I have shown you, you know, I perhaps will create a three fracture system about this I'll, I'll perhaps create the fracture system yeah And then what we we might observe that maybe two of them are actually becoming <coughs> divergent plate boundaries. Two of them are making the actual rift. Yeah, they are called rifts. Okay. They are rift, uh, drifting apart. But one of them, one of the arms will perhaps remain inactive. And this is what we call as a failed rift. This is what we call failed rift. Now, there could, there could be a situation where all three are active. There could be a situation where only one of them is active. There could be a situation where all three of them are active. There could be a situation where only one is active. There could be a situation where two are active. Okay. Now, they, these all, all three of them are creating some sort of plate boundaries, right? So, hence, these plate boundaries are meeting at a point, and we call this point where these plate boundaries actually meet. Okay, this is what we call as a triple junction. In the, sorry, I think I, Pen is little. It's called a triple junction. E. Now, in the subsequent classes, what we will study is the stability of triple junction. Okay. But the example that I have given here are, you know, all of them are rips, right? So 
but I have shown here rift, rift, and rift, RRR triple zone. But it not it might not always be RRR. It can be. Let me just clear the canvas. It can be R R R. That means all three of them are rifts. The rifts. Okay. It can be. Now these plate boundaries can be transform faults. Transform or transcurrent faults. Then we will call it as F. We will indicate it as F. And it can be a subduction zone. We will call it as P. E. So the triple junction can be. RRR, it can be, you know, R, F, T, it can be F, F, T, F, F, R, so on and so forth, in all sorts of combinations. Okay? And you can find out how many combinations you can make by combining these different red boundaries, right? Now, one of the tasks that we will um, assign ourselves will be to find out the stability of such junctions. Okay, we will try to find out which triple junction configuration is stable and which triple junction configuration is unstable. Okay. That is something we are going to look at in the subsequent classes. Okay, so if we just uh, go ahead with the, with the discussion that we have been talking about, so this is one of the uh, beautiful examples of a of a triple junction where you can see this is Red Sea, this is Gulf of Aden, but you can observe here the presence of a failed reef. Okay. But nevertheless, this is one of the triple junctions where you can you can classify this as a R R R triple junction because all three of them, all these two are active rifts and this is a failed rift, right? <coughs> now, if we look at the convergent red boundaries, of course, here you can see the, that the oceanic crust is going with down the continental crust, right? And then there is these uh, beautiful volcanoes that are being generated. As a result of uh, the melting of this, uh, as a result of the melting of this uh, oceanic crust. Okay. Now, if you think about, so here the crusts are actually being destroyed. Okay. Now we can subdivide these. Uh, Convergent red boundaries into three categories where we see collision between ocean and continent. We can call it as uh, where oceanic crust and continental crust, uh, uh, you know, converge with each other. It is ocean continent red boundary. It can be an ocean ocean plate boundary. So one oceanic crust is moving beneath another oceanic crust. So this is ocean ocean plate boundary. And then, of course, there is continent continent plate boundary. So these are the basic three types of convergent red boundaries. Okay, so uh, you can read in Laudi's book why these three types of red boundaries actually uh, exist in nature. I mean, the the example that we had previously given you, you know, we we said that the oceanic crust is actually heavier than the continental crust, and it is most likely that the oceanic crust will actually uh, go down the continental crust, and that is what we observe in most of the cases. But then why we observe in nature also ocean, ocean, plate boundary, and why we also observe continent, continent, plate boundary. It's a nice explanation given in Laudi's book, but uh, please, please read them. And if you have a question, you may, you may get back to me, okay? 
So now we have talked about uh, convergent plate boundaries. Uh, and you can see such beautiful convergent plate boundaries like here. Say, for example, uh, the uh, Nazaka plate, the Nazca plate is essentially going down the South American plate. This is a, uh, this is a uh, convergent plate boundary. And you, you will see here the uh, African plate. Uh, the, So this is the, the mid-Atlantic ridge, as you can see here. Okay. Um, so anywhere you observe that uh, an oceanic plate is, uh, so we have a mid-oceanic ridge and to, so this is the East Pacific rise, East Pacific ridge. And then to compensate the seafloor spreading here, you have to have a, uh, you have to have a uh, collisional boundary, the ocean continent um, boundary as well. This is an example. This is this is an example where you you will observe that oceanic crust is going beneath the oceanic crust. Okay. This this is one of the examples. Now, where do you see continental crust is kind of colliding with continental crust? Uh, it's in the Himalayas. If you think about it, okay. So the Tibetan plate is colliding against uh, uh, the uh, uh, sorry the Indian plate is colliding against the uh, Eurasian plate, right? So the clue to the answer why would a continent continent plate, plate boundary be there? You know, continent continent uh, collisional plate boundary will be there is uh, lies in the answer that the, there was a this sea between the Indian plate and the uh, Eurasian plate, right? Which is right now consumed. Okay. So if I just tell you once more, if I just explain that bit here. Suppose uh, so here is my here is my continental plate and here is my oceanic plate, right? And suppose and then this is moving this this side and this is being This is being submerged beneath this continental crust. Continental crust. Oceanic crust. And of course, but then there will be another ocean, continental crust here, right? You know, the ocean will not be everywhere, right? So now there will be a time when this part will be consumed. This part will be the ocean will be consumed and that is the time when you will observe that this continent one which is this one this is continent two will then collide with each other and depending on the many other factors you know of course one continent will go down the other continent And there could be the formation of beautiful mountains here. For example, okay. so this is how uh, I, I, you can you can read about the mechanism in bit more details, of course, in in Laudis. Now, if we take our discussion forward. So the third kind of plate boundary is transform fault, yeah, and this is what we call as uh, one one plate moves past each other. So there is no generation of new crust or there is no destruction of the of the crust. This is just sliding past each other, okay. And this is what we call as transform plate boundary. Every uh, ridge that you find or every mid oceanic ridge or divergent plate boundary you find. They are always associated with uh, these transcurrent faults or trans, uh, transform plate boundaries. Okay, uh, but then they also exist uh, like uh, like in their own. So crust is neither created or destroyed. Plates slide past one another. Okay, and then the, the most 
beautiful example is the San Andreas Fault. Yeah, San Andreas Fault is also known for uh, uh, its uh, crazy earthquake episodes. Okay, so here the Pacific Plate essentially slides past the North American Plate. A Pacific Plate sliding past the North American Plate. Okay, you can see here. So this is a transform fault, and you can see here there is this uh, trenching going on. So this is perhaps another triple junction. Okay. This is a triple junction. This is a triple junction. This is a triple junction. And we will study what are the configuration of this, this triple junction so that they're stable or not, okay, later on. So San Andreas Fault is a continental transform fault that extends roughly 800 miles, 1,300 kilometers to California. Uh, it forms the tectonic boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. Uh, its motion is right lateral strike slip okay so you have learned another uh, important word here right lateral strike slip and left right lateral strike slip okay <clears throat> so i will tell you what is that in a moment so suppose i have this is one plate boundary. This is a transform fault or a plate boundary. And then this is my motion indicator. Motion indicator means if I put a motion indicator like this, that means this particular, so this is plate A, this is plate B. So plate A is moving towards this direction. So moving up and plate B is moving down, right, with respect to the uh, with, with respect to the paper. Now, let's see how San Andreas is. Okay. Okay. Now, what you are supposed to do, suppose this is this is the type of configuration you are observing. What you are supposed to do, you are supposed to put a ball inside. Okay. Put the ball inside. I'm just looking at right now for your convenience. Let us say this is my direction of movement, and I put a ball inside. Okay, and if I put a ball inside, we have to observe how this particular ball will rotate. Okay, if I if I if I provide this motion, I can see that this ball will rotate counterclockwise. Right, and then if I observe something like this in this particular case the ball will rotate clockwise okay so if the ball rotates clockwise we call it textral strike slip and why we are calling this is strike slip means it's uh Think it's uh, here. It did not work properly. So here I place my ball. This moves in the clockwise direction, and we call it as extra strike slip. Okay. okay. And then, of course, if the ball rotates. Counterclockwise, we will call it as sinistral strikes. Why this strike slip? Why it is called for a strike slip? Because the movement happens parallel to the the movement happens parallel to the strike of the of the plate boundary or the strike of the fault, right? Hence, it is called a strike slip. Now, if I look at San Andreas fault. If I, yeah, we can we can place a ball here. Okay, how the ball will move? The ball will move clockwise, right? So this is a dextral type of strike slip, and the dextral type of strike slip is also called right lateral strike. Slip, okay, the so dextral is a more uh, more uh, technical term, so use dextral. So dextral uh, strike slip that is what we observe in uh, in case of San Andreas.
so you can observe here so these are the different trade boundaries that i that i can see that i can observe around the world okay where i have arrows which are directed opposite to each other these are all my divergent trade boundaries where the arrows are towards each other you can see here the development of himalayas this is india this convergent trade boundary okay and wherever we find uh, uh, say for example here where we wherever we find uh, such you know arrows which i just just had drawn to explain uh, dextral and sinistral uh, we call them as transform trade boundaries okay you can observe the transform wherever where are the transform trade boundaries where are your uh, convergent trade boundaries and where are your divergent trade boundaries and you can you can put here your ball and you can see whether it is a dextral strike slip or whether it is a uh, sinistral strike right and of course the numbers essentially uh, provides you the relative motion uh, in the scale of millimeter per year and there are some uncertain boundaries as well people do not exactly know what sort of boundaries are there uh, but then uh, most of them are sorted as you can see okay. and we will study and we will study uh, there are there are plenty of spaces where you will see this for example this is a triple junction okay. the triple junction uh, you will find a plenty of places where such triple junctions actually exist and we will try to uh, understand the stability of such triple junctions in the uh, subsequent classes. Okay. So let's just uh, stop the discussion here. And uh, I will, if you have a question after you watch this video, please get back to me. Otherwise, I will take the questions as well uh, in the next class, which will happen on uh, Wednesday from 10 to 11. Thank you very much.